dear students today we are going to deal with tend metabolic pathway related to carbohydrates we all know that carbohydrates are considered as the principal source of energy of the body of this carbohydrates one important monosaccharide that is the glucose is considered as the preferred source of energy for most of the body tissues say for example brain cells they derive the energy mainly from this glucose so whenever the glucose metabolism is deranged in our body that can lead to life threatening conditions so there is always a mechanism in the body in order to maintain the blood glucose level at a constant level when the blood glucose level is increased we call that condition as hyperglycemia when it is decreased we call it as hypoglycemia so in order to maintain this blood glucose level at a constant rate there are certain metabolic pathways that is operating inside the body to keep it at a balanced level the normal blood glucose it is kept in a reference range of around 70 to 110 mg per deciliter when it goes at a high level the body can't tolerate similarly when it goes to a decreased level there also the body can't tolerate so for the proper day to day function of our body the glucose level always it should be kept at a balanced level so the balanced level it is because of the proper operation of all the metabolic pathways that is present within the body itself so today we will see one important pathway related to this glucose metabolism and that pathway is glycolysis this pathway is also called as emptor mayo of pathway emptor mayo pathway the name glycolysis it has been derived from a greek word it means that it is a splitting of the sweet here the sweet is glucose so the glucose is lysed or the glucose is splitted so what happens to this glucose in the end in aerobic conditions this glucose is converted to pyruvate and in anaerobic conditions this respective glucose it is converted to lactate and another important peculiarity is that all the reaction steps of this glycolysis it happens or takes place in the cytoplasm and it is the only pathway that is taking place in all cells of the body and this is the only source of energy for erythrocytes so this uh, diagram it represents that the process of this glycolysis in the cytoplasm in eukaryotic cells and similarly also in prokaryotic cells so here you look what happens to this glucose glucose by means of this aerobic oxidation the end product of this glucose is pyruvate
okay this is the glucose molecule which is a six carbon molecule at the end of this reaction it is converted to a three carbon compound that is hydrogen this picture it represents the overall steps of this glycolysis here you can see the major enzymes that are involved in the conversion of this glucose to pyruvate and step by step you can see the intermediate products that are produced by means of these reactions and the end you can see the compound pyruvate this is the case of this aerobic oxidation but in an aerobic condition this pyruvate it will be converted to lactate so we can say that the glucose is converted to pyruvate by means of aerobic oxidation and this glucose is converted to lactate by anaerobic oxidation step so now step by step we will see what happens to this glucose so this is the first step of uh, glycolytic pathway that is the conversion of this glucose to glucose 6 phosphate here you can see the enzyme involved is a exokinase so kinase this respective enzyme it is involved in the transfer of uh, phosphate group from this atp molecule to this glucose so that this glucose is converted to glucose 6 phosphate and the atp after donating its phosphate group it changes to adp atp is converted to adp at the same time glucose by utilizing one of its phosphate group of atp is converted to glucose 6 phosphate and here the enzyme that is involved in this step it is exokinase so coming to the next step what happens to this glucose 6 phosphate that has been generated from this glucose this glucose 6 phosphate by means of uh, an isomerization reaction catalyzed by an isomerase it is converted to fructose 6 phosphate and isomerase is phosphoglucose isomerase or phosphohexose isomerase here if you observe the respective structures you can see that there is no major changes that has been happened but only isomerization that means the the molecular formula it remains the same but there has been some structural difference so phosphoglucose isomerase converts this glucose 6 phosphate to fructose 6 phosphate so that's the second step now the third step of this uh, glycolysis here yeah, the fructose 6 phosphate it is further phosphorylated so the phosphorylation it is carried out by a kinase here we can call this kinase as phosphofructokinase so it is said to be an important enzyme in the glycolytic pathway so just have a look into the fructose 6 phosphate which is only having one phosphate group in its structure now by the addition of another phosphate group which has been donated by one molecule of this atp this fructose 6 phosphate is been converted to fructose 1 6 this phosphate so just have a look into the previous slides 
Here the first step when the glucose is converted to glucose 6-phosphate this reaction is said to be an irreversible reaction. Coming to the second step here you can see that this is a reversible reaction. Can be converted this fructose 6 phosphate, it can be converted back to glucose 6 phosphate. The third step you can see here this is also a irreversible step. Now, coming to the fourth step, the fourth step, if you are closely observing, here you can see the difference. The produced fructose 1,6 phosphate by means of the third step is converted to glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate and also dihydroxyacetone phosphate. Firstly, in the fourth step, fructose 6-phosphate is converted to dihydroxy acetone phosphate and at the same time glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate is also generated the reaction it is catalyzed by an enzyme called as alkylase Fructose 1 6 bisphosphate is converted to 1 molecule of glycerol, glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate and also 1 molecule of dihydroxy acetone phosphate. At the same time, this dihydroxy acetone phosphate is isomerized to glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate by the enzyme phosphotriose isomerase phosphotriose isomerase or it's also given as triose phosphate isomerase the net result is that the glucose molecule is now cleaved into two molecules of glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. One from fructose 1,6-bisphosphate and another through its conversion from dihydroxy acetone phosphate. So two molecules of this glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate is produced. Now the next step, the glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate which has been produced in the earlier step, it is dehydrogenated, it is dehydrogenated and at the same time is simultaneously phosphorylated to produce 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate to produce 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate with the help of NAD this is a reversible reaction in the next step the produced 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate from the earlier step it is converted to 3-phosphoglycerate here a kinase enzyme is involved here what does this kinase do? this kinase 
accepts the one of the phosphoryl residues or phosphate groups of this 1,3 bisphosphoglycerate. It transfers or it converts its ADP to ATP at the same time this 1,3 bisphosphoglycerate is converted to 3 phosphoglycerate. Now it has only one phosphate group in its structure. Previously there were two phosphate groups, hence it was called as 1,3 bisphosphoglycerate. Now we can call it as 3 phosphoglycerate because the phosphate group that was present in the first carboxyl residue has been now accepted by ADP and thereby the ADP is converted to ATP and the 1,3 bisphosphoglycerate molecule is converted to 3 phosphoglycerate. Now coming to the next step, here this step is catalyzed by an enzyme called as a mutase, more precisely we can say it as phosphoglycerate mutase. The only difference is that there is a structural rearrangement in the structure. The phosphoglycerate, 3-phosphoglycerate molecule is converted to 2-phosphoglycerate. The phosphate group which has been present at the third position, it is now, it has been shifted to the second position in the presence of the enzyme, phosphoglyceromutase. This is also a readily reversible reaction. the next step, the 2-phosphoglycerate is converted to phosphoenol pyruvate by the enzyme enolase. Similarly, at the same time, there is the removal of water molecule. The reaction is said to be a reversible one. And this enolase, this respective enzyme, in most cases, or it requires magnesium ions for catalyzing its activity. In the next step, Phosphoenol pyruvate it is dephosphorylated to pyruvate. Dephosphorylation means it is the removal of this phosphate groups or the removal of this phosphoryl residues. So, if you are simply observing the structure, you can see there was a phosphate group in the earlier structure of this phosphoenol pyruvate, and when it gets converted to pyruvate, the phosphate group. been gone. So another peculiarity is that this pyruvate kinase is also considered as a key glycolytic enzyme. Here you can see this is the enzyme and this reaction it is also an irreversible reaction. And what happens to this pyruvate? This pyruvate, if anaerobic oxidation is happening, this pyruvate it gets converted to lactate. The pyruvate will be converted to lactate. pyruvate it is reduced to lactate by the enzyme lactate dehydrogenase but in normal cases we can say that the end product it is the pyruvate itself but in anaerobic conditions this respective pyruvate it will be converted to lactate in the presence of the enzyme lactate 
厉害都讲一次。